I'm Kate Byers, founder of Corporate Women Unleashed. I am delighted to be bringing you a fantastic client interview today. Heather, who has a um, big job in technology, is here to share her story of where she was at in her career, both before she came to us in um, Corporate Women Unleashed and after. And she has a powerful, powerful story. I'm so delighted that you're here. Heather, thank you. Thanks for, um, thanks for you know, sharing what, you, your, what you'd like to bring to us today. You're welcome. It's great to be here. It's one year on. I can't believe it. And how much has changed in one year. So look, looking forward to sharing it with everyone. I know. And this is cool because a lot of times when we do these um, conversations, you know, it's, it's right after someone's graduated. So I love that we get to talk to you a full year out and see, you know, where you're at. So let's just dig in. Like, what, let's, I think that's a good place to start. You know, everyone wants to know, like, what's, what's the result? Like, what's your life like now? So what is the outcome or what is the result and how has that changed? Yeah, sure. So, so I was working longer hours than I wanted to, um, and now I'm getting to finish at 4, 4.40, pick up the kids, which is really nice, um, and spend a bit more time with them and cook for them, and we don't need to nanny anymore because I'm spending that time. I guess that was where the end goal was. I needed to free up my time, but also I wanted to be happier in the type of work I was doing and delegate some of the things that I wasn't doing. So some of the key things that I put in place that I felt were instrumental to getting to me to where I wanted to be now was um, putting in a senior leadership team actually to support me and take off some of that weight. So from having, I went from having 10 direct reports to just having four. And that made a big difference in terms of um, just freeing up my time and also creating that support system. Like I felt like it was the, the, the success of the company, which is my own company, was always on my shoulders. And actually now I have three people who are so committed to the success of it as much as I am. And they take that senior leadership role really, um, you know, they, they really invest time in that. And they're as brought in as I do to make the company successful. And I felt like I never had that before. So it feels like it's not just me at the front line. Um, so that's freed up my time. Like over the last year, I've been capacity building them in those roles. So it wasn't an overnight thing that I was like, right, you're in post, I'm off now. <laughs> it hasn't happened. So I only started working less hours. I mean, COVID has obviously had a bit of a, a had a bit of a curve this year with us. But you know, from sort of September and the kids going back to school, that's when I was able to sort of stop work at four and sort of free up my time and, and do it. So it's taken, you know, it's taken time to get there given the circumstances we've had as well but that's really allowed me to refocus I think the other the other sort of big win for me um and, and my keyword my buzzwords you ask us what our word is that we have to put in front of us and it was about being happy mm -hmm. and the other thing that I really found that's made me happy um is I've freed up my time and now I deliver more training so I run a company called super mums and we upskill mums in technology and salesforce technology and I've now been able to get back and do a group training program and I love being back on the front line because I was constantly doing senior management sort of roles and never really feeling and seeing the impact of our work and now I'm running a group coaching program that's brought in more money and income for the business I get that buzz out of training people again it's one hour a week of my time like I need to do prep of course but I love it like I love doing that sort of stuff so that's been really valuable and I managed to get myself um, the final thing from a health and well-being point of view is um, I can do exercise without needing a personal trainer to kick my bum out the door like I've had ever since I went self-employed which now is going back 20 since I was 25 so 14 15 years I had to I don't know what changed but when I went self-employed I really struggled to get myself to the gym and keep fit without having somebody knocking on the door and taking me like my my motivation changed mm -hmm. and so I'm really proud of myself like it seems so silly but I'm really proud that I can take myself swimming and for a run twice a week <laughs> without <laughs> need somebody to do it which as I say sounds silly but it's such a big thing for me and I'm not having to pay out on a personal trainer anymore right. I really enjoy that time you know mm -hmm. just chilling out and, and everything so loads of stuff but yeah they're just some of the key building blocks right <laughs> Wow, Heather, that is so rich though. I mean, I just want to stack on that for everyone. Like think about what we're really looking for in our life. Like, yes, you can swim, go running and exercise and still be there at the end of the day for your kiddos. Not even the end of the day, like late afternoon to cook yeah. and mom. And, and yet here you are running this fierce company 
but now you have a leadership team that's helping you. So you're not dragging the company behind, you know, dragging people behind you. You're like chasing them to keep up. And nothing's changed. You, know, you didn't quit your job. You didn't, you know, in fact, if anything, you're probably wealthier because you don't have all these people helping you live your life anymore. You don't need the nanny. You don't need the trainer and all these things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's huge. That is huge. Okay, so um, obviously that's massive, but where were you before? In other words, what was life like before you found us? And maybe you could give us sort of that backstory. Probably ready to quit my job. I wrote a resignation letter to, to myself. Did you really? <laughs> on holiday. Um, I was like, I'm not doing this anymore because when I used to go on holidays, mm -hmm. I'd have to pick up things like it's, you know, sales things or it's projects that were going wrong. And I didn't have anybody I could lean on. And I literally, like, I have a board of people and I don't want, you know, how do you write a resignation when it's your own company? But you sometimes feel trapped in your own company because it's your company and you can't just walk out. You can't quit. Um, and so, you know, I was really like, I didn't have a light at the end of my tunnel. I didn't know, you know, what to do next. Um, and yeah, it just happened that I came across your program on Facebook at the time and um, listened to your videos. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like what I need right now. And I was just, you know, at that point of needing yeah, that combination of business and personal support, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it wasn't one or the other. It was something that combined everything, really. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Wow. I, I don't remember that story, Heather. That's huge. Like you wrote your own resignation letter. Oh my gosh. So what was it for you then? Um, in other words, you found us on Facebook, but what, like, why was it important to fix it? Like, right, I don't know enough about your situation. Were you, was it like giving up on all those people and women that you helped and you were like, I can't face that? Was it just walking away from income? Like what was I mean, obviously walking away and closing down your company of 20 years or 14 years is huge. I know. Well, I mean, yeah, the companies I've got now are, um, I haven't been going that long because I had a, a, fir a first one. And my first company um, didn't make it because of changing situations and because I didn't have a strong management team. So I suppose I've always had that fear of, well, this one's going to go the same way. And what do I need to do differently? And, you know, mm -hmm. you've always got that underlying fear a little bit. Um, and so with this one, I just needed to, um, you know, re-gravitate. Well, I'm a leader of the organization. You know, who am I? What do I stand for? You know, how, what leader do I want to be? Why do I feel like I'm not living out the life that I want? And I felt that your program and what I listened to was, you know, you were saying all the right things. I was like, yes, 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 yes. That's exactly what I need and what I want to get to. And I want to learn how. And I'm a big advocate. I've spent like 40 odd thousand pounds on CPD, continual professional development since I've left university. Mm -hmm. And I'm constantly wanting to learn from people and constantly sort of, you know, if I've got a problem, okay, let's find out more about it from those who've taught Solved. it and, and know it. Yeah. Rather than struggling along by myself. So that's why I felt it was a really good investment and it's, you know, transformed my life to where I am now a year later, you know. That is incredible, Heather. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's talk about leadership for a minute, because I think one of the things that comes at us as women is, well, you just need to delegate more. Well, you just need to time block your calendar a little bit. You know, you need to, well, just get your people up to speed. <laughs> Don't those things sound easy, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. But it's, it's the like, you didn't need, so you certainly didn't need me, me to tell you those things. What do you think when it really comes to leadership, what was standing in your way? I mean, you went from 10 direct reports now to three. Um, you know, and really you've elevated them into like, own, like having ownership for the mission of what your company does. Right. What did you have to get out of the way to do that? I'd always, I suppose the view had always been that um, I need to make enough money to hire in senior people that, wow. you know, it was kind of like, you know, it's a big investment having more senior. So you're scared of paying that out and you think, well, I'll hire more cheaper junior to get me to that point. But then that they weren't able to live up to that. And I wasn't then I was having to, like, support them in more capacity. Mm -hmm. So it was really about hiring people at a more higher senior rate who could take on that responsibility and then train people below them. Mm -hmm. And also... I had somebody in the organization who'd been with me um, for this particular business for five years and 
previously hadn't been ready to step into a head of delivery role, but actually I got on the phone, you know, after one of our calls and said, you know, look, Martin, I really want to fill, fulfill somebody to be head of delivery and manage the delivery team. Would you be up for it now? Um, and he said, yeah. So it was also about internal promotion and somebody that knew the ways that we worked and was brought into the company and had respect for me, which is really important because I had tried hiring people in a senior role before, to be fair, um, but it hadn't quite worked out. So I kind of, you know, it, it's trial and error with that. And, um, and now a year on, I'm, you know, I'm really pleased with the team we've got in. So I think it's, it's not giving up on that, you know, focus, but it was that that's been able to shift everything for me because that's freed up my time. So that was definitely the first thing that I had to do yeah. to make a change, which felt scary because it was investing more. Um, it had gone wrong before, but I was like, if I don't do this and take the risk, it's not going to happen. Mm, I love that, Heather, because what you're really bringing up is fear, you know, and I talk a lot about that. You learn a lot about that when you work with us, right? As women, we fear mistakes, we fear failure, we fear wasting money. Oh my gosh, you know, a lot of scarcity that comes with being successful, oddly enough. And so it sounds like you had to work through some of that to um, re-engage with that strategy of hiring a senior management team. How cool is that? Okay, so what else had you tried before you found us possibly? Had you, had you been trying some of these other things like, you know, yoga class or I don't know, like calendar blocking or what was it? Yeah, well, I had a couple of retreats, which were good, but then it's like a little weekend away and then everything's back to normal again when you get back, right? So <laughs> it didn't really happen. And then as I invested, I mean, I've always, I'm a coach because um, my background's coaching and I've had business and life coaching before or sort of more personal coaching but they weren't structured it felt like just a conversation and I think what I really liked about your program is I love tools and techniques and strategies and things that I can work on mm -hmm. and it was all recorded and I love that structure and that's really what helps me move forward is when I'm sort of understanding things I can tap into it in my own time like the videos are there and then the exercises are there and it really well work well in that structure and that's what I realized is I hadn't got that I had, you know the other sessions that I'd had hadn't really moved the dial that much um, the business coaching had helped move the dial from a business and a sales point of view but it wasn't helping me as a leader think about the wider perspective on my life and business overall got it Oh, I love that. Was there anything we asked you to do in, in, as you were going through this process with us that was like totally crazy or insane or you were like, I can't believe you've asked me to do that or did it just sort of flow and seem to make sense? I think just um, just doing things outside your comfort zone and yeah. really sort of challenging yourself. Um, like I did that, I did a little dance, which I put on the yes. video, I remember that. I remember that to do a little like flash mob dance to my company which I look back now and like I can't believe I did that but it's something that I just thought would be funny it helps engage me it helps people see another side of me and um, just have a bit of fun really and I think that was the key thing is that your program helped challenges outside of our comfort zones and moving away from normal patterns of thinking and behavior so um, there's definitely that sort of you know kick up the bum from that point of view. That's awesome. I forgot about your dance, but I remember when you did it and you were so like, I can't believe I've just done this. This is so awesome. And you're alive and you're okay. And they loved it, I'm sure. Um, what about ancillary results? I mean, you've already mentioned a lot, like your health, your spending time with your kids, like your leadership is off the charts. Anything else you want to share or just even like a closing message for another woman out there who might be, you know, sitting where you were a year ago, writing that, that resignation letter? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I feel like I'm much more aware of my needs and what I need and sort of being honest with myself about that and learning how to get to where I want to be has been what this program has been about is like learning from other people, learning other tools and techniques, um, like some of your top tips around, you know, creating a routine and a habit has been really important as well to make sure I go and do things. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's about learning. It's about assessing what I need and then applying and getting that motivation to do it and putting it into practice and I think we all need help to do that um, because sometimes by yourself you don't quite get particularly when you're in a place of despair which you know I felt that I was in October there's no light at the end of the tunnel I don't know which way to go feeling really demotivated not happy mm -hmm. it's very hard to move yourself out of that zone um, to a point of 
you know sort of you need somebody and I think the group for me was also really powerful and it makes you think that you're not the only one going through this I think that was the other thing that was key for me in the program was having a, I didn't get to know all of them individually because we were part of a group but we had the Facebook group and you know you're sharing stories and uh, as I say you you feel like you're not alone and you can be emotional on those webinars and everybody's open and honest and supportive and I think just being in that place where there's other women like you when you're a leader at work you have to have such a brave face all the time oh. and you know you can't be that brave face all the time you have to have that other area and support network where you can take the brave face off and just sort of you know break down have yeah. the emotion think through it you know work on it and have somebody coaching you through that process um has been valuable really so i'd encourage anybody to sort of take the steps if they need to if they really are in that point of um despair right now and need to see a way out oh heather that's so beautiful i know your words are going to resonate with a lot of women because i think yeah, as, as women who are successful, there's not a shoulder to lean on very often. You know, we, like you said, we're the ones that are carrying the torch and it sure is nice just to like put it down every now and then just for a moment and, and, and further develop ourselves. So what a great message. You are amazing. I love, I love the life you're living now, Heather. How cool. Your kids must just be delighted to have mom home every afternoon. Oh, how awesome is that? I'm so happy for you guys. Thank you so much for doing this. So just so pleased. Really appreciate you. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for helping. I'm delighted to share my story. So <laughs> that's awesome. All right, cool. Thanks, Heather. Thank you.